is Brian of Triphonic, and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about Massive. I'm going to talk about its performance editor um, and how we can assign that to modulate things like the filter cutoff. So I'll play you an example of what that sounds like. Let's start with a fresh new patch and we'll make that uh, sort of rolly synth sound that, that you heard in that uh, demo example. So um, go to File, New Sound. Starts you with a uh, clean slate here. Um, and I'm actually going to utilize just these waveform, these wavetables actually that we have right here. So uh, oscillator 1, I'm going to just set it to down an octave, minus 12 semitones. Alright, and so I can see with this one the wavetable goes between square and uh, saw. Have it on square. Send this to bend plus. I just like the way it bends the wavetable and the way it reads through it. And I'm going to just assign its output only to filter 1 because that's what I want to deal with so far. And let's bring in a little bit of oscillator 2 here. So I'm going to have this pitched at 0. So that's going to be playing back an octave higher. Set the wave tail position to a square. But um, I, want it, I don't want it to be so bright. So I'm going to bring down the intensity. So remember, the intensity. So here's only oscillator 2. I turned off oscillator 1. The intensity the amount of harmonics in the sound. So I'll put this somewhere in the middle and that will blend in. It won't be quite so bright but we'll still get that upper octave with this lower sound. And I'll bring down its level a little bit as well. Just so it's subtle. Send that also to filter one only. Um, and then we can see I've got this routed in parallel um, but because these are only routed into filter 1 and my mix is only listening to filter 1, then filter 2 is doing nothing. So I'll just turn it off. Um, I'm going to set filter 1 to a low pass filter. A low pass 4. It's a 4 pole low pass filter. So that means it's going to be 24 dB per octave, 6 dB per pole. Um, so, one way that you can make sounds more expressive. Um, is you can have velocity control things. So I'm going to have velocity control the amount of resonance uh, on our low pass filter, but just in a subtle way because it can easily get obnoxious into sort of over the top acid resonant sounds that I don't want to hear. So um, just make it subtle where it's just a small range of resonance that, uh, that my velocity will control. But just to show you, so when I drag this velocity thing down here up up to uh, here, it's a, it assigns it to resonance, and so I can set the range by uh, dragging up here with um, when I play harder, more resonance. So that's a little bit over the top. So we'll just bring this way down. So now I want something to control this filter cutoff. Um, to give it, uh, you know, more movement. So typically, what I do um, is, you know, apply an envelope to it. So I've got uh, a number of different envelopes here. Um, there's four envelopes, and they uh, are actually really cool envelopes. I think in the next video I'll talk about talk about what you can do with that. I also have an LFO module. So uh, real briefly, I could drag this on. So I want this to control my filter cutoff. So I drag. Uh, drag it over here to my filter cutoff and then drag up on the number to set its range because uh, a LFO is bipolar meaning it goes to both positive and negative values it represents that graphically here 
so we can hear what that sounds like. I can adjust the rate. Get a real simple wobble. Synchronize it to a uh, division of the beat. Um, and then I can choose a couple different curves here, so uh, or or shapes for my LFO, um, and then I can crossfade between them. I can have that's uh, one choice for the top, one choice for the bottom. It has a bunch of presets of all sorts of interesting waveforms, so you can go crazy with that. But actually, um, what I'd like to discuss today is the performer um, control in here. So. Over here on the right it says LFO. I've actually got a few more choices. I can choose performer or stepper. So I'm going to talk about the performer. So I change this to performer, and you can see that uh, it's got two different shapes here. So um, there's two sequences that I can have loaded in, uh, and this X fade sequence slider here is going to control which one we're hearing. So here's the bottom one. So they're similar, but you can hear the difference because of their shape. This is a unipolar, so you can see that it only goes one direction um, in terms of where it's showing the range. So I'm going to set my cutoff to very little and then give this more range. And um, the interesting thing that we can have happen here is you can draw in some really uh, cool, cool shapes with this. So. Um, I can hit this load curve button. It gives me a palette of basically different tools. So if I wanted to do, uh, try to do something real quick that's uh, simple. So draw in this and one of these. Um, okay, and then let's put in a couple of these little, little crazy things here. Oh, maybe, maybe this one instead. We'll have this slow down. And then we can just have it repeat. If I want it to only be eight steps long, do that here. Get rid of my load curve. So you can see, you can make a pretty cool uh, little, it's like LFO or customized envelope shapes here to, to modulate whatever parameter we have this set to. So in this case, it's cut off. And I can adjust the rate which it's reading through this. So quarter notes or sixteenths. And then I can have it restart basically every time I hit a new key. So where it's going to re-trigger uh, this sequence from the beginning. So so you can hear every time I hit a new note that this highlighted step um, goes back to the beginning and restarts the sequence. If I uncheck that, I can uh, play different notes and it will just continue through the sequence infinitely. So even when I play different notes, it doesn't re-trigger the sequence every time. So we get a pattern we like uh, happening here. And now I want to also fatten up the sound a little bit, so we can go um, use our uh, master effects here. So I'm going to use this Teletube distortion. Maybe that's a bit too much. Bring the wet dry down. That's nice. I like that. And the dimension expander is always a nice way to add a little space to this as well. Bring down the wet dry. Gives a little bit of a room sound. It's easy to go overboard with it, set the size too big. Sounds cool on its own, like you're in some big warehouse, but with everything else, it would be too muddy, so just a little bit of space. And there we go, then we're on our way to a pretty cool sound.